In this video, I'll review three of the more popular password managers going into 2023. But before we start, I'd like to thank RoboForm Password Manager for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk more about them later. Okay, first let's review why we need a password manager. A 2019 study in password statistics found that an average person juggles around 70 to 80 passwords across multiple devices. And a 2022 study that looked at passwords included in large-scale data breaches found that 123456 was the most commonly used password. Other common variations were those with the word password, QWERTY, and those with the year included in the password. No surprise, right? If you're juggling 70 to 80 passwords, you can't be expected to remember strong, unique passwords for them all. I myself was a victim of lazy passwords and got my Evernote account hacked back in early 2021. And you guessed it, my password included the numbers 123 in it. So that's when I realized I needed to up my password security. In addition to enabling multi-factor authentication for sites like Evernote and others, I replaced my simple, easy to remember passwords with strong, unique passwords to be stored in a password manager. And many password managers now offer additional features like securely saving your personal information like name and address, credit cards, and notes that you can easily retrieve to fill in web forms like when you're buying something online. So password managers is one of those things that I rely on and use every day without really thinking about it, but would really be completely lost without. For example, I recently replaced my phone and for the first few days had not yet installed my password manager on it. It was super frustrating to try to log into different applications and websites without having the username and password automatically filled in. So for me, having a password manager is essential. Okay, so before we start reviewing dedicated password managers, it's worth mentioning that most web browsers do offer basic password managers built in. However, these browser password managers have major limitations. You're limited to the browser where your passwords are stored. Meaning, if you save your password in Chrome, because that's what you use on your home computer, but if you use a Safari browser on your work computer or on your iPhone, you won't have access to the saved passwords. Also, if you start saving passwords in different browsers, it becomes really difficult to maintain since if you update a password on one browser, you have to also do it in the other, and you won't always remember which browser has the actual up-to-date password. And lastly, Passwords saved in the browsers will not work on apps on your phone. So dedicated password managers, of course, will allow your saved passwords to be used across devices, websites, and apps. Okay, now that we understand the importance of password managers, let's evaluate some of the more popular ones that are currently out there. I rounded up three popular password managers to be evaluated based on their ease of use. Again, one of these, RoboForm, is a sponsor for this video and they're graciously offering 30% discount for new users. I put an affiliate link in the description below. Regardless, I'll share the usability examples of all three password managers that are rounded up so that you can make an informed decision on which suits your needs the best. By the way, this is not going to be a technical review, so I won't be spewing technical jargons like military grade, AES, 256 inscription, SHA-SHA-20, trackers, etc. No doubt, these are all important, but again, for casual everyday users like myself, all three password managers featured here have industry standard encryption strong enough that it'll be nearly impossible to crack using today's technology. So instead of focusing on the technical features, which by the way, I found most of the core tech features to be very similar across the different password managers, they just happen to use different marketing terms for them. So instead, I'm gonna focus on the usability of each product and how they make your life easier. For example, how easy is it to navigate the overall user interface? Is it clean, simple, and intuitive? How easy is it to store login info and retrieve them for later use on a web page or an app? How easy is it to generate new, strong, and unique passwords? How easy is it to fill in forms like credit card info and shipping addresses? And lastly, how easy is it to share passwords with others like your family members? These are the features that I use every day. I want the security without adding complexity or friction to my workflow. So in that sense, 
I actually don't care too much about advanced features that I won't use. As long as it does these core things exceptionally well at a competitive price, that's what I'm looking for in a password manager. So first, let's take a look at the extension interface. One thing that differentiates LastPass with other password managers being reviewed today is that it highlights the number of fillable items that's available for the current website right on the extension icon. We can click into it to view what those are, and this is generally helpful, but sometimes not always relevant. For example, these three suggestions are actually for me and my family's Gmail accounts, but since they all use a Google domain, they're being suggested here. For RoboForm, the extension opens right into some of the websites you visit most often, so you can open and log into any of these with one click from here. And for 1Password, similar to LastPass, it opens with suggestions that are tied to the website that you're currently on. So it just comes down to your preference here. If you prefer to visit specific websites by typing in the URL or using bookmarks, then using the password manager to log you in, then LastPass and 1Password suggestion feature could be helpful. But if you're like me and prefer to start from the password manager extension to log into your frequently visited websites with one click, then RoboForm will be the choice here. Now let's look at the vaults. For LastPass, click on Open My Vault and you see large thumbnails of all the user logins that are stored. You can toggle between grid and list view and sort the items the way you want. And you can filter the list to view specific categories of your secure items. Click on the big red plus sign to add a new password. You can back arrow to all items to add other secure info like your address. In RoboForm, click on the home icon to get to the vault. Similar to LastPass, you have the grid and the list view, but it has one additional compact view to see more items on a page. You can filter your views by the different folders. And similar to LastPass, there is a big plus blue icon to add a new secure login. What's different here is that RoboForm offers suggestion to popular websites and applications. This means that you won't need to enter the web URL manually. If you're a new user to a password manager, don't already have a CSV file to import a list of existing passwords, then this is a great way to batch add a bunch of user logins. In 1Password, it isn't intuitive to get to the vault. I thought clicking on the brand icon would get me there, but it doesn't. I had to click on the edit menu to get to the vault. And because I entered this vault with an edit action, it expects me to edit the secure item. It won't let me click on the other items until I cancel out of this edit menu. This is not intuitive for me. However, you can filter the list using tags, which is essentially the same as folders in RoboForm. To create a new secure item, click this plus icon and you get a list of all of the different forms you can use to capture and store your info. I like that they offer a lot of different options here besides the typical password, credit card, and address info. Now let's use the stored username and password to log into websites. We're on Envato Elements website. We'll first try LastPass. It fills in the username and password automatically and we will click sign in. Very straightforward. They do have the option to enable auto sign in as well, so you won't have to click on the sign in button. Let's try a different website that has a pop-up window for login. Here, LastPass hasn't auto filled in the login info, although it's clear that they do recognize we have one fillable form here. The password you see here was actually auto filled in by the Chrome password manager. I noticed that LastPass experienced the most interference from the browser password manager. I'm sure there are settings that I can change to fix this, but this is what I get with default settings. Pressing on the LastPass extension icon brings up not only the suggested password from LastPass, but suggestions from the browser's password manager, which is overlaid on top. Even when I managed to select the user login from the LastPass icon, it only updated the email address and not the password. I had a hard time trying to click on the LastPass icon from the password field, as the prompt to show and hide the password was obstructing the icon. But once I was able to get to the icon and select the password, I was able to log in fine. In RoboForm, again, my preference is to launch websites directly from the extension. This is because I can find my most used websites in the popular tab. Just clicking on envato.com gets me to the website and locks me in with a single click. For BNH Photo with a pop-up login window, Unlike with LastPass, I don't get the interference from the Chrome Password Manager. 
Also, the RoboForm extension icon is smartly placed outside the form fields, so even if there was interference, it wouldn't be an issue to click on it. Here, clicking on the suggested credentials signs me into the website, no problem. For 1Password, let's try opening up Envato.com from the extension. We'll search for it, then click on Open and Fill. So that opens the website and fills in the login info. You'll still need to click on Sign In. So a few more steps than RoboForm, but it works just fine. For BNH Photo, the suggested login shows up in the email field right away. Clicking on it fills in the password field as well. Similar to LastPass, the extension icon is hidden behind the Show and Hide button, so that's not ideal. But since it filled in the login fields correctly, it's not a big issue. Now let's look at how these password managers handle filling out forms. We're on the checkout screen for Gap.com, and we need to fill out the shipping address. With LastPass, we're once again getting some interference from the Save Browser Autofill. I'm going to ignore those and go to the password extension on top, View Fillable Items, then Home. And that correctly fills out all of the info. For RoboForm, it's super simple. The extension icon shows over the field. Click to choose Home, and the form is filled in. Can't get easier than this. 1Password also does a great job of filling out forms. While you don't get the icon on the form field, you can go to the extension at the top of the browser. My identity card is already showing as a suggestion, so just click on autofill and you're done. Now let's try generating some passwords. In LastPass, you get this special icon in the password field. and When you click on it, it shows you an auto-generated password and you can fill it in right away. But if you want to customize the password, you can click Show More Options and can change things like the number of characters, whether to include letters, numbers, and symbols, and so on. I do like that they have the option to generate passwords to make it easy to say or to read. Once you fill in the password, LastPass prompts you to save it into their vault, and it does a good job with this. In RoboForm, you can click on the icon and choose Fill to fill in the auto-generated password, or click on the cog to customize your password. It's very similar to LastPass. After you change the parameters, regenerate the password and fill it in. Once you continue to the next form, RoboForm will ask to save the password into the vault. In one password, once you've entered in your email address, it shows the suggested password for you to click and add in a single click. Once you do that, it offers to save the user ID and password into the vault. If you wanted to customize the password, then instead of choosing the suggested password, you need to go up to the extension icon on top and customize and fill from there. Now let's try sharing a password with someone. In LastPass, from the vault, you can click on the share icon for any item and enter the recipient's email address and share. You do have the option to let the recipient view the actual password. The recipient will receive an email access to shared login but they must have a LastPass account for this. Similarly, in RoboForm, go to the vault, right-click on the login you want to share, then select Share. Add the recipient's email address, and you get a warning if the recipient does not have a RoboForm account. Again, the recipient must have a RoboForm account to access the shared login. In 1Password, from the extension menu, find the login you want to share, click the three dots, and share. 1Password actually allows you to share login with anyone, regardless of whether they're signed up for their service, which is nice. You can set the expiration for the link and have the option to share the login info with anyone with the link, which actually sounds very dangerous, so you can specify people with specific email addresses. When they click on the link, they will see their login details in a browser. And if the link was shared with specific email, the recipient will first need to verify their email with a code before being able to see the login. Now that we review some of the more practical everyday features, let's look at their pricing. As you can see, they're all competitively priced with RoboForm coming in at the lowest price for individual subscription. Again, all three password managers featured in today's video are great and you won't go wrong with any one of them. 
But if you choose RoboForm, then make sure you use the affiliate link below for the 30% discount. And thank you again, RoboForm, for sponsoring this video and making the discount available to the viewers. That's it for today's video. Hope you all have a happy, healthy, safe, and secure new year. See you in the next video.